Before you go to battle with your enemy, you must fully understand your enemy. Lucky for us, the enemy puts everything you need to know about the battle um, on their website. This video is going to give you a quick overview of everything you need to know about the AP Statistics exam. In future videos, we'll get into some details, we'll look at some actual free response questions from previous exams, we'll talk about how the College Board grades your work, and I can give you some tips and tricks to help you do a little bit better on the free response or like be a little more prepared and less nervous. This video is just going to go over the basics of how the exam works. Shall we do some disclaimers? I don't work for the College Board. I've never worked for the College Board. I'm not an official grader, and I've never, I never have been. Um, I applied one time, and they said I could do it, and then I said, can I do it from a different country, because I'm going to be abroad this summer, and they said no. I've taught AP Statistics for like 10, 9 or 10 years. I'm 95% confident I would get a 5 if I took it now. I think I could do it. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, some information about the exam. It's two sections, multiple choice and free response. Each section, they give you an hour and a half. Multiple choice, it's only 40 questions. I don't think I've ever had a student complain that they ran out of time on the multiple choice. I have frequently heard students complain that it's too much time and that they just end up sitting there. And uh, you could double check your work, but <laughs> it's worth 50% of your exam score. And I think it's helpful to know that you probably won't be rushed it's also helpful to remember that they're not grading your work on this section. So if you do come across a question that needs like binome PDF or norm CDF or something like that, don't waste too much time writing out all the calculator speak because they're not going to check what you wrote. They're just going to see if you got the answer right or wrong. So, you know, sketch the normal curves because it helps you, um, you know, avoid little mistakes. Um, write down some of your work so you can go back and check it later, but don't get too hung up on like labeling everything and being super detailed in showing your work because that doesn't really matter for multiple choice. The second section is the free response section. Another hour and a half, there are six free response questions. It's worth 50% of your exam score and usually I hear from students that they feel rushed on this part of the test. Of the six questions, we can kind of break this down into parts. They used to not release this information, even though AP teachers basically knew it. Now they just come out and say what the questions are about. So the first five questions are on specific topics. There will always be one question with a focus on collecting data. So those are questions about like sampling methods and experimental design. There's always one question about exploring data. So that will be like describing a graph, like Visco. Um, or it might be making like a box plot or um, a segmented bar graph. I think it could be like describing a scatter plot um, or like a regression line, but basically like, I don't know, that's kind of the easier question usually. There's always one question on probability and sampling distributions. There's one question that focuses on inference. So that's a significance test or a confidence interval. And then one question that combines two or more of those skills. Now you might be thinking, all of a minute, we've spent months on significance tests and confidence intervals. You're telling me there's only one question on those? Yeah, only one free response question. So what I think is this one question that combines two skills, they're going to take that opportunity to throw in a little bit more inference there. And there's probably going to be a part of it that has to do with a significance test or um, a confidence interval. But that's, once again, disclaimer. I don't work for them. That's just that's just my guess. When we spend so much time on it, it's got to show up more than once in the free response. Okay, and then question number six is a whole other thing. It's called the investigative task. It assesses multiple skill categories and content areas focusing on the application of skills and content in new contexts or in non-routine ways. So basically, question number six is supposed to be about something you've never seen before, which sounds scary, but it's actually one of the least intimidating questions, I think. I'll make a separate video on question six because I feel like it deserves its whole, a oh, whole other video. Okay, the College Board has free response questions from previous exams and all their scoring guidelines. Like, there's tons of stuff. Now, if you go back too far, it's probably not going to be that similar to what the tests look like now. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the 2024 test and let's just see what the free response questions look like. 
Okay, so we know the five types of questions that are going to be on here. It might be helpful to just preview all the questions just to identify which one is which. And honestly, you don't really have to read every word of the question to figure out what kind of question it is. Like, okay, there's three paragraphs of number one right here, but if I skip down to the end, do the data provide convincing statistical evidence of a difference? Okay, this is the inference question, a check. Okay, number two, I can ignore all of this and just see complete the segmented bar graphs. Um, is elementary school administrator's conclusion correct? Okay, this is describing data or exploring data, they call it. Uh, yeah, exploring data, a check. Okay, number three, is this a study or an experiment? He's using a completely randomized design, describe an appropriate method you could use to randomly assign. Collecting data, a check. Number four, probability, everybody's favorite. <laughs> okay, number five, this must be the combination question. So we got a bunch of stuff. Start with probability, probability again, name the hypothesis test, do not perform. State the null and alternate, do not perform. What conclusion should she draw? Interesting. Okay, so they're having you do like parts of a test without doing the whole thing. Cool. Okay, and then we get to number six. So sometimes it's helpful to just look through and be like, oh, number four is my probability question. Good to know. I need to give myself extra time for that. Okay, uh, this is 2023, so let's do the same thing. Number one, I'm going to skip over all this and just look down here. Describe the distribution. Okay, exploring data. Check. We're making a graph. Yeah, exploring data. Number two, oh, I can see right away. Collecting data. A check. Probability. Everybody's favorite. Yeah, expected value, that, that's probability. Number four, this is either the combination or the inference question. So let's see if I skip. Is there convincing evidence? Inference. Check. Okay, five must be the combination. Describe the relationship. Okay, it's a least squares regression line question. Um, use it to calculate predicted, calculate residual, interpreting slope. Determine p-value. Okay, it's our combination question. We got a little um, inference. We got a little least squares regression line. Okay, let's do one more just so you can see some more examples. Here's 2022. Number one, describe. Okay, exploring data. Okay, oh, <laughs> look at that. Treatments, experimental units, response variables, collecting data. Check. Number three, we got a random variable, it must be probability. Yeah, probability, everyone's favorite. Okay, um, number four, construct and interpret a confidence interval. So there's inference, and then five must be the combination question. Compare the medians, so that's kind of like exploring data. Difference in sample means convincing statistical evidence, so that's sounding like inference. Results of a simulation. Yeah, this is uh, this is the combination question. So maybe you're a person who could just start the first question and be like, I'm going to go in order. That's cool. But if you're a person who wants to start with the easiest question and then save the hardest one for last or vice versa, it can be kind of helpful to skim and preview the types of questions that are in your free response exam. If you want to see me do some AP review problems from actual tests, make sure to hit the subscribe button because in the next video, I'm going to tackle probability. It's number three on the test, but number one in our hearts. That was lame. I, uh, that was lame. I'm sorry. <laughs>